Hi everyone and welcome to today's class where we're going to make this uh, lovely scissors case and um, it's like a zipper pouch so these are a couple that I've made before this is the one we're going to make in the video and as you can see this one has got a little pocket in and you can put your little embroidery scissors in there as well you can always make the pocket slightly longer if your scissors are a little bit bigger I've got a really big pair of scissors in this one So this is the one that we'll be making in the video. Here's another one in a yellow fabric. So I've got my pinking shears in this one. So if you've got particularly thick scissors, um, this one, I have made the pouch slightly deeper in the video than I made on this one, but they do fit in here. So you could make it slightly shallower or you could make it slightly uh, bigger if you needed to. This one hasn't got the pocket in. And then this is one I made a while ago. This one I've quilted. This is in a lightweight upholstery fabric. Um, this one has got a machine stitched uh, inside turning gap. And you'll see me do a hand stitch one in the video, which looks much neater. So there we go. So gather all your supplies together and let's get started. Okay, the tools that I used in this class today. This one is uh, Fabri-Tac glue. It's a permanent fabric glue. You, this is not a, necess a necessity. Let's get that out. This is not a necessity. You can just uh, use this if you've got it. If you've not, don't. Might be worth in considering investing in it. It's brilliant glue. If you haven't got one of those, you could try, if you've got your glue pen, your wash away glue pen, you could use that and that helps a little as well. I'm also using quarter inch quilting wash away double sided tape. Um, th again, this is not a necessity, it just facilitates putting in a zip much easier. Um, I've used a ruler and just a regular pen, and then I've used um, some tailor's chalk as well. Uh, a bulky Sea Maid or a hump jumper. Um, if you've not got one of those, then a little piece of folded up card or paper helps to put under the back of your foot when you've got a little bit of a bulky seam. I'll show you how to use that. I've used my twe tweezers for helping things along and then you probably want some clips or pins or both. Uh, the Easy Grip Liars by Hemline, I've used them for helping me turn things through and then if you want to hand sew the turning gap then I used some wax so that to stop the thread twisting and a needle and thread. Oh, I also used my zipper foot. Yours might look a bit wider than this. I can't find mine, so I've got my narrow one. So the materials you're going to need for your outer fabric, for your outer fabric, you're going to need um, approximately a 13 inch square of fabric. Uh, I've used, I'm using a quilting cotton. Okay, and then for your lining, you're going to need a piece which is roughly 13 tall by 18 wide if you're going to put the little pocket inside. I haven't put it on this one, but on the one in the video, I'm going to put a little pocket here so that you could slip your uh, embroidery scissors into that as well. If you were going out to a class, you could have them both in one bag. Uh, if you're not going to put an extra pocket in it, you just need another 13 inch square for your lining. You'll also need... You'll also need some iron-on wadding. I've got one, the code is VH870. This is like a, a fleece, an iron-on fleece. Uh, it's quite a, a little bit more of a dense one rather than a soft fluffy one. So the gluey side, your iron-on side. For the inside, for the lining, I've used um, a very lightweight, non-woven iron-on interfacing. Now you can leave the interfacing from the lining if you if you choose. You don't have to put that on, but it does make your fabric more stable and it makes it feel more finished when it's done. It's less likely to stretch out when you're sewing as well. So you also need um, a 10 inch zip for this size. Okay, that's pretty much all the materials that you'll need other than a coordinating cotton to whatever uh, colour fabric that you're using. So, if you, while it's still a 13 inch square 
uh, while they're still in the full pieces, I would advise putting your uh, interfacings on now. So I've ironed on the fleece to the outer fabric and I've ironed on the lightweight non-woven to the lining fabric already. I do that. I like to do that before I cut out. So, uh, it makes, just makes it easy, a little bit easier. You'll also need to print your two pattern pieces out and cut them out. Uh, to get this, you can just um, to get this, you can just click the link in the description bar below, and it says uh, for the co dash. <sighs> So you also need to print out your pattern pieces. You can uh, get these from the link in the description box down below. You go to, It's the Kofi link. It takes you to my Woolly Elephant Kofi shop where you can then download these for free. So you need to cut both of those out as well. Okay, if your, if your fabric is non-directional, imagine this isn't cut. If your fabric's non-directional, then you don't need to cut it like this. You'll just be able to fold it like this, uh, wrong sides together. You can then pin on your pattern, pin on your pattern, and then cut that out with both sides at the same time. That way, you know both pieces in the, are facing in the right direction, and you're not going to have one pointing this way and one point in that way and then they won't sew together. So if you do them both at the same time, but have them as they will be on the finished object. So right, wrong, so wrong sides together. Now, if you have a directional pattern like this one, I didn't initially think it was, but it is. You want to just fold your fabric in half again and just cut it down the center. So you've got two pieces. And then that top one, you're just going to rotate it and then put them together so that you've got one upside down and one the right way up. So your pattern die will be now going direction this way and then from the top down. And then again, you can just lift them up and fold them so they are back to back. Just double check you've done it right and that your pattern's going in the right direction. And then you can pin on your pattern make sure this is level so it's straight uh, with the top line so you've not got it at a bit of an angle because this having an angle can throw you off sometimes so pin that on cut through both layers at once and then that's your outer fabric for your lining fabric have it the long edge along the bottom and top edge now this one's non-directional so again, if it's directional, you're going to roughly have to do the same thing. Um, but mine's non-directional. So, But this time, I'm going to fold it with the pattern on the inside because that's how it will be when it's behind the line. And it'll be inside these two layers. It'll be inside these two layers, and that's how it will be like that. So this is to just to make sure that you're going to get all your pattern facing in the right direction. Okay, if it's directional, just cut it here first, then you've got this extra bit for doing your pocket. So place your pattern piece on, pin it on, and again, just cut it uh, all the way around, just like you did with your outer fabric, so that your pattern is on the inside this time and then you'll know you've got everything facing in the right direction now for your pocket piece if you're using it i've just done a small rectangle so you could use scrap fabric for this and you could cut out two pieces or you could cut out one piece on the fold so you could just fold it down place it up against the fold pin that in place and then just cut round and then you've got your piece uh, ready for right so that's my pattern pieces cut out now at this point as well if you want to put um, a zip tab on then you could just cut out a little square of your fabric your lining or your outer it's up to you preferably probably your lining because it coordinates and it's only got the lining interfacing on um, at 1.25 inches square 
so one and a quarter inches square that's for if you want to put a tab on the end uh, if you're going to do that I'm just going to show you now you just fold it fold it in half find the center open it out and then fold the two ends in just like you're making a bag strap and then press it like that and then that's ready to use now as your uh, zip tab once you've made your zip tab if you want to use that then you want to roughly cut off the end of your zip just a little bit more than a quarter of an inch so we'll say about three three eighths just mark that on with a bit of chalk okay and then I'm just going to cut that off And then you can seal the end of your zip with your zip tab. Now you can just stitch that straight on. And I'm just going to put a little bit of glue inside the zip tab. Right, I'm just getting a bit of glue on both sides. If I don't do it that way, then you can end up putting a bit too much on. Put your zip inside and then just close that up. Okay, and then leave that for a couple of minutes to dry and then you can trim the edges and then we can stitch that in place. At this end of your zip, okay, so this is going to sit just outside your seam allowance at this end. So we're just going to fold these back at this end. So I'm just going to open my zip a little bit and these extra pieces that you've got at this end just literally just going to fold them back like that so this then edge comes across a straight edge hope you can see that because it's being black just take that take that end fold that under and then you'll have a straight edge here so I'm just going to put the tiniest dab of glue in there I'm just going to clip that do the same on this side this saves getting pins in the way. Okay, zip that up. Make sure they're both at the same height. I've got a little bit of leeway with this glue. And that one, okay, so that we're just then just going to set them aside to dry for a couple of minutes. Okay, while that's drying, we could then go and just sew over the end of our tab just so an eighth of an inch in away from the edge um, and I would possibly use between three and a three and a half millimeter uh, stitch length for that you don't need to worry about back stitching because it's going to be sewn into your seam allowance and as that it's I'm using an acrylic zip uh, you can sew straight across the zip okay so once I've, once you've stitched that I've done the uh, 3.4 on my uh, stitch length. So once you've stitched that, then you can just trim it. You may find when you're stitching these, because it's a little bit bulky, you might need your bulky seam aid uh, to help you get up over that neatly. Okay. Take these off. These should be dry now. Okay, so that's our zip now. All ready to go so I'm just going to set that aside we're not going to sew it in just yet I'm just going to make the little pocket if you're not making the pocket then you can just skip past this section okay so on your pocket you've got um, a line here it's just slightly off center if you fold it in half you can see there's your center there's your center line there but it's slightly off it's two inches in from this side so I've just put a chalk mark two inches in from this side on the right side of your fabric so this will be um this will be the side that you see but it doesn't matter you can make the line if you want to go all the way down it's just i'm just using the tailor's chalk it's just for lining it up um when you place it afterwards you line this up with the center line to get it in the right place um you could stick a bit of masking tape on or something like that if you haven't got any chalk or if you've got a vanishing marker or something like that but I find just a bit of chalk or a bit of masking tape 
and then afterwards you can just peel that off. It just gives you the uh, line to mark up with the centre line for placing your pocket inside your uh, pouch. Okay, so you're just going to fold your pocket uh, right sides together. So you've got your four and a half inch side here and your five inch along the top. Fold it up. So that's long edge to long edge. That's your five inch length. And then we're just going to stitch round with um, a quarter of an inch seam allowance. You just need to leave yourself a little turning gap. I'm just leaving a turning gap of about an inch and a half. So start here, stitch to here and back stitch there. Or I'll show you um, another way uh, that I've learned recently and I used in the last bag tutorial. You can stitch right to the edge there. So I'm going to stitch a quarter of an inch seam allowance. That's about a quarter of an inch. Okay. Okay. So quarter of an inch. I'm starting at the folded edge on this side. Back stitch there. Okay, move your needle down and turn. Now, when you get to that line, so the back stitch in there, turn your needle so you're towards the raw edge, and then stitch off. And I'm just going to do two back stitches there. You don't want to back stitch over that. Uh, too far over that line, so I'm only doing a couple. So I'm going to put my thread there. So I'll put my needle down where I want to start. Yep, I'm in the right place. Back stitch off. I'm just going to do two stitches there for the quarter inch. Turn and do your quarter of an inch there, and then back stitch at that end. Okay, so what you've got there. Is your stitch line going straight straight to the edge now when you turn this through it turns through a whole lot neater okay so we just want to trim trim our corners okay and then we're just going to turn that through okay this is where I use these easy grip pliers Hemostats. I believe a lot of people you can get hemostats. They're much longer than these, what the surgical ones, but they have the same grip that grabs hold of things. Okay, so that's all poked out, and then I'm just going to add a touch of glue in there, give that a press, and then it's ready to sew on. Now I can still just about see my chalk line there so that's good for the pocket placement on my lining okay but first this is the top edge the opening i've put at the bottom edge um and then the folded edge is the top edge so just go and top stitch along that top edge don't stitch off the ends i stitch in about an eighth of an inch from each side and back stitch at each side I use about a 3.4 millimetre stitch length, um, about an eighth of an inch away from the top edge. So meet me back here when you've done that. There we go, top stitched. Not the straightest line, but there you go. Okay, so now you need one of your linings. I'm using the back one. Uh, put that there and we're going to place this on here. So if you find the center top now I have marked the template You can just fold it in half and snip it there There is a mark on the template if you need it Just do this within your seam allowance if you want to do it Okay And then I'm going to line that up with this line here and you need to do it approximately half an inch down. My little ruler here is half an inch. Okay, so that's my chalk line, uh, if you can still see it, lined up uh, with that centre line there and I'm half an inch down because we're doing a quarter of an inch seam allowance. You could go slightly further down, you've got a little bit more room here. 
but then you just want to pin that in place okay i'm just using one one big pin so that should be enough and then you're going to stitch that on around those three sides so start here back stitch a couple of times um go down across the bottom and up to the top and back stitch there as well okay so that's that stitched on can i just say just to remember if you're a beginner um to leave your needle down and rotate it when you when you get to a corner just in case you're a beginner and you forget that stitch to there leave your needle down turn, lift your foot turn and stitch down that way nothing moves out of place okay so that's your pocket now stitched in place so that should fit fit your little embroidery scissors in or your little snips fit inside your bag as well okay so we're going to attach our zip now so find your center point hold it in half and just put a little snip and your center point or you could mark it with your chalk i'm going to do the same with the zip this just makes lining it up a lot easier do this on both sides of the zip so i've got it for the other one as well Okay, so that you can then line up your mark here with your mark there. Okay, so I'm using some quarter inch quilting tape and I've got some Scotch non stick scissors I use. This got from a stationer's. Tweezers can be easier for getting this off. Okay, so have your zipper at the end that you want it at. I'm just going to undo that a little bit, actually. It's easier to put in. Flip it over and then line up your centre mark. I can just see it through there. And then just stick that down. Try not to stretch it out. Same at this end. That's come undone, unfortunately. Didn't put enough glue on. Okay. So then you're going to get the appropriate lining piece. Make sure it's the it sits at top like that so you know it's it's the right one because this is the front and then fold that down. Just find the center on that one, make sure everything lines up. Now you can either use quilting tape again or you can clip this in. I tend to clip this top one in. And then we're going to stitch this in at a quarter of an inch seam allowance. So you might want to put your zipper foot on now for this one. I'm also going to add a couple of clips here too at the side just to make sure it doesn't shift over while I'm stitching it. Okay, if you're a beginner stitching this, you might need to use your bulky seam made at the back. If you haven't got one of those, just roll up a bit of cardboard or paper and then that can, you put it under the back of your foot and it just levels your foot out while to stitch on if you have trouble getting on here. It's from the end. Okay, so um, also if you're a beginner, when you get to your zip, my zip's there, stop with your needle down, lift your foot, pull, your, reach under, open your zip and then put your foot back down and continue on okay right zip that up hold that back so you'll now need to give this a press okay press it along here make sure you don't melt your zip i'm just going to finger press it for a second while i do while i do the other one and then I'm just going to go and press them both together before we top stitch. Okay, so now you need to get your next uh, pieces. So this is the next one. This is how you're going to start off with it. If you start off with it this way up, so it looks like this, then you know you're going to be going in the right direction. So put your quilting tape if you're using it. Across. 
Okay, so I'm just going to have it this way around so I know I'm putting it on the right way. Fold this right sides together. Line up your edges here. This won't, the edge won't, bottom edge won't line up because you're going up against your zip. Now, I'm just going to flip that over now. So I know I've got everything lined up. Press that down. Try not to stretch your zip so you don't get a wibbly, wavy line. going to open that zip up a bit. It's harder to start with a zip at the end. Okay, so that's that's now on. Close that back up. Okay, so then you're going to flip this over so your lining's facing up. And then we're going to uh, attach this one. So I'm just going to, um, you can either clip it in place like you did before, or you can add some tape. I think I'll just add a bit of tape this time. Okay, flip that over. Line up your centre line. And then I'm just going to turn it over, do it from this side. Make sure that it's all lined up to the edge. Okay, that's that on. So we're now going to do exactly the same thing we did before and stitch from here to here. Like I said, this is feeling, it's starting to feel a bit thick now, so you might want to put this under the back of your foot to help level your foot out to make it easier when you're sewing over the ends. Uh, zips here, don't forget when you get to the zip, leave your needle in, lift your foot, undo your zip, go back that way, and then put your foot down and carry back on and back stitch at the other end. Okay, there we go. So open that out and your lining. So there's your little pocket. So now I would suggest you go and give everything a good press if you haven't done already. Okay, that's had a good press. Now I just want to make sure everything's lined up and in the right place before I top stitch it. So I'm just going to add a couple of clips to make sure it doesn't shift while I'm top stitching so you get a nice neat finish so we're going to top stitch here an eighth of an inch from the edge and I'm using 3.4 uh, stitch length on my machine so about an eighth of an inch in from the edge okay there we go all top stitched Okay, so all there is left to do now is to sew it all together. So you're going to need to open your zip at least three quarters of the way, half to three quarters of the way, and then fold your two right sides of your outer together, and then your two linings right sides together, and then clip up in those. Now, make sure you line up Make sure you line these edges up here. Just do that end as well. Okay, so that's clipped all the way around. Now you need to leave yourself a turning gap it's on the lining. So this is my lining here. So Leave about a hand size mark there. I'm going to put a little turning because it's a quarter, roughly a quarter of an inch. I might go to three eighths of an inch on the lining, so it's not baggy. If you do your lining slightly bigger, um, and that's where I'm going to stitch off the edge there, like I showed you before. I also on these corners here, I like to mark where I'm going to stop with my needle. Um, just makes it a bit easier for seeing where you're going to stop. So that's probably roughly three eighths. If you sew where your lining meets your outer fabric, it needs to be exactly the same. So this needs to be a quarter of an inch all the way around and a quarter of an inch here. But as you sew onto your lining, you can go to a slightly bigger seam allowance, and then your your lining isn't baggy. So I'm going to do it there. So that's three-eighths. I'm used to by-eyeing um, 
quarter of an inch or half an inch okay so that will be where I turn there so that's more going to be there okay do the same here this will be quarter of an inch here just because they're on an angle it just makes it a bit easier to see where to stop okay so you're going to start at one side um, back stitch here and then turn and then go all the way around to here I'm going to uh, show sew in this one so you can see about if you're a beginner how to get up and over these thick sections I have found my uh, bulky seam made now right I'm just going to start here just at that mark there put my foot down get my needle right where I want to start that's there and then I'm just going to back stitch there so I only did two stitches and then come back forward so needle down and turn so don't forget on my lining I'm doing roughly three eighths which is about I think about 10 millimeters it is on my uh, machine I've got a 10 mil mark there and then we're just going to stitch to our mark and stop there Move your needle down and turn. Now when I get to here, I've got my tweezers, I'm just going to help push. Now as your foot starts to get to here, it tilts up. So if you use this your bulky seam made lift your foot and put it under the back drop it back down maybe just make sure you're not going to stitch on it this will help you get up and over here bit of a push with my tweezers just push that back under as it moves okay now I still want to back I want to back stitch a couple over there keep your thing under the back of your foot but don't stitch it. Now as your foot starts to now tilt forward, just move that, come to the front and put it under there. And as it comes off, it starts to level out. And we're now at a quarter of an inch. I've moved over gradually, so I'm on a quarter of an inch seam allowance now. So stop at midpoint, one more, foot, lift your foot, turn, lift and turn, okay. okay again as your foot starts to lift, Foot, put your bulky seam under the back. Oh, I hit my machine, didn't like that bit. Hand crank over that bit. I think I need a thicker needle there. No, doesn't want to go. Okay, so I've replaced my needle. I was trying to sew, I was hitting the, the tab supposed to be going past the tab and I was trying to hit that it was too thick and the needle broke so I'm back again so I've got my bulky seam made under there so this time make sure I go past you don't want to hit all that the idea is to sew past that as you can see I'm not having any trouble this time okay push this to the front as it starts to tilt down, this will help stop any skip stitches. Okay, that should be right now. And then we're creasing to three eighths of an inch here. Okay, turn there. Stitch to your mark. Stop with your needle down. Turn and then stitch off the end okay so there we go 
right okay so now we just need to trim corners i'm just trimming my threads so trim your corners across so if you trim all your corners um and then we'll be ready to turn it through Okay, that's my, my seams all, uh, my corners all cut and in the lining I have trimmed the seam allowance down a bit as well as it was a, a slightly bigger seam allowance. Okay, so now let's just turning it through. So I hope you've remembered to leave your zip open like we said before. Okay, just turning it through, I just bust the seam open there, so do back stitch that when you uh, go off the end so it doesn't bust open. Right, okay. Okay, so all there is left to do is uh, sew up your seam. Uh, I'd recommend doing that with a, a ladder stitch by hand. Um, there's a little video I should be able to show up in this corner here on how to do that. I actually do it on this project. I have actually stitched that in the coordinating uh, turquoise thread so that you can see it in the video. Um, but as you can see it disappears. You'll do it in the a matching thread um, but as you can see it just disappears and you can't really see it anyway. So if that was all you had handy, you could still do it. So that's the seam now sewn up. If you didn't want to do it by hand, you could do it on your sewing machine, tuck it in, and then that's all now ready to receive your scissors. So I've made this and it fits every, I've made this big enough to fit all my different pairs of scissors that I've got, my big scissors. So they'll all, they're the biggest ones and they, they're right to the point. Some of my other ones are a little bit shorter. So if you're going out to a sewing class, you can take your scissors, you might even be able to fit more than one pair in, and then you can put your little embroidery scissors in the pocket inside, zip up, maybe add a bit of ribbon or a charm on the zip, and you're ready to go. So there you go, I hope you enjoy that. Can't wait to see the ones that you make.